the dating and authorship of the letter of James is a very much argued over question. Um, in terms of the authorship, the, the most common opinion of the tradition is that it is written by James, the brother of the Lord, as he's called, uh, who was head of the church in Jerusalem uh, for many years. Um, if that's the case, then the letter would necessarily have to have been written before the year 62 or 63, which is when James was martyred. Um, I place it here because it contains no sense of the, uh, the controversies that would soon follow. It's clearly written to uh, a Jewish Christian audience. Um, the other thing, though, is who is James the brother of the Lord? Um, you'll see lots of different interpretations. It's not entirely consistent even within the tradition, but uh, many of the early church historians identify him with James, the son of Alpheus, um, in the Gospels, one of the twelve. And according to this, th this interpretation, Alpheus is also identified as Cleophas, which is interesting at any rate, who is supposed to have been, if I remember rightly, the brother of uh, St. Joseph. Um, and that, well, anyhow, um, James was the brother of Jude then in that account, uh, and then also of Simeon, who succeeded him as bishop in Jerusalem. So, without further ado, the letter of James. And so we're looking somewhere late 40s here. James, the servant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you shall fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. And patience has a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, failing in nothing. But if any of you want wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men abundantly and does not upbraid, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, which is moved and carried about by the wind. Therefore... Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is inconstant in all his ways. But let the brother of low condition glory in his exaltation, and the rich in his being low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun rose with a burning heat and parched the grass, and its flower fell off, and the beauty of the shape of it perished. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is that man that endures temptation, for when he has been proved, he shall receive the crown of life, which God has promised to them that love him. Let no man, when he is tempted, say that he is tempted by God. For God is not a tempter of evils, and he tempts no man. But every man is tempted by his own concupiscence, being drawn away and allured. Then, when concupiscence is conceived, it brings forth sin. But sin, when it is completed, begets death. 
Do not err, therefore, my dearest brethren. Every best gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. For of his own will he has begotten us by the word of truth, that we might be some beginning of his creature. You know, my dearest brethren, and let every man be swift to hear, but slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not work the justice of God. Therefore, casting away all uncleanness and abundance of naughtiness, with meekness receive the ingrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if a man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he shall be compared to a man seeing his own countenance in a glass. For he beheld himself, and went his way, and immediately forgot what manner of man he was. But he that has looked into the perfect law of liberty, and has continued in it, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And if any man think himself to be religious, not bridling his tongue, but deceiving his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Religion clean and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their tribulation, and to keep oneself unspotted from this world. My brethren, Do not have the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ of glory with respect of persons. For if there shall come into your assembly a man having a golden ring and fine apparel, and there shall come in also a poor man in mean attire, and you have respect to him that is clothed with fine apparel, and shall say to him, Sit here well, but to the poor man, Stand there, or sit under my footstool. Do you not judge within yourselves, and are become judges of unjust thoughts? Listen, my dearest brethren. Has not God chosen the poor in this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which God has promised to them that love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you by might? And do they not draw you before the judgment seats? Do they not bless the name that is invoked upon you? If then you fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin, being reproved by the law as transgressors. And whoever shall keep the whole law but offend in one point is become guilty of all. For he that said you shall not commit adultery also, also said you shall not kill. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but shall kill, you are become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as being to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment without mercy to him that has not done mercy, and mercy exalts itself above judgment. What shall it profit, my brethren, if a man say he has faith, but has not works? Shall faith be able to save him? And if a brother or sister be naked and want daily food, and one of you say to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, yet not give them those things that are necessary for the body. What shall it profit? So faith also, if it have not works, is dead in itself. But some man will say, 
You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you by works my faith. You believe that there is one God. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works, offering up Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith cooperated with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, saying, Abraham believed God, and it was reputed to him to justice, and he was called the friend of God. Do you see that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only? And in like manner also Rahab the harlot, was she not justified by works, receiving the messengers and sending them out another way? For even as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Let not many of you be teachers, my brethren, knowing that you receive the greater judgment. For in many things we all offend. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. He is able also with a bridle to lead about the whole body. For if we put bits into the mouths of horses that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body, Behold also ships, whereas they are great and are driven by strong winds, yet they are turned about with a small helm, wherever the force of the governor wills. Even so, the tongue is indeed a little member and boasts great things. See how a sm fa small a fire kindles a great wood. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is placed among our members, which defiles the whole body, and inflames the wheel of our nativity, being set on fire by hell. For every nature of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of the rest is tamed and has been tamed by the nature of man. But the tongue no man can tame, an unquiet evil full of deadly poison. By it we bless God and the Father, and by it we curse men who are made after the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. From where are wars and contentions among you? Are they not from here, from your concupiscences which war in your members? You covet and have not. You kill and envy and cannot obtain. You contend and war and you have not because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may consume it on your concupiscences. Adulterers, do you not know that the friendship of this world is the enemy of God? Whoever, therefore, will be a friend of this world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, To envy does the spirit covet which dwells in you. But he gives greater grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Be subject, therefore, to God, but resist the devil, and he will fly from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy into sorrow. Be humbled in the sight of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not detract one another, my brethren. He that detracts his brother, or he that judges his brother, detracts the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. 
There is one lawgiver and judge that is able to destroy and to deliver. But who are you that judge your neighbor? Behold, now you that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and there we will spend a year, and will traffic and make our gain. But you do not know what shall be on the morning. For what is your life? It is a vapor which appears for a little while and afterwards shall vanish away. For that you should say, If the Lord will, and if we shall live, we will do this or that. But now you rejoice in your arrogance. All such rejoicing is wicked. Is any of you sad? Let him pray. Is he cheerful in mind? Let him sing. Is any man sick among you? Let him bring in the priest of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick man, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he be in sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess, therefore, your sins one to another, and pray one for another that you may be saved. For the continual prayer of a just man avails much. Elijah was a man passable like us, and with prayer he prayed that it might not rain on the earth, and it did not rain for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. My brethren, if any of you err from the truth, and one convert him, he must know that he who causes a sinner to be converted from the error of his way shall save his soul from death, and shall cover a multitude of sins. And some coming down from Judea in A.D. 49 taught the brethren that except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when Paul and Barnabas had no small contest with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of the other side should go up to the apostles and priests to Jerusalem about this question. They, therefore, being brought on their way by the church, passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, relating the, conversa relating the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and by the apostles and ancients, declaring how great things God had done with them. But there arose of the sect of the Pharisees some that believed, saying, they must be circumcised and be commanded to observe the law of Moses. And the apostles and ancients assembled together to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter, rising up, said to them, Men, brethren, you know that in former days God made choice among us that by the mouth that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows hearts, gave testimony, giving to them the Holy Spirit, as well as to us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you tempt God to put a yoke on the necks of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear. But by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe to be saved, in like manner as they also. 
and all the multitude held their peace. And they heard Barnabas and Paul telling what great signs and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men, brethren, hear me. Simon has related how God first visited to take to the Gentiles a people to his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After these things I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen down, and its ruins I will rebuild, and I will set it up, that the residue of men may seek after the Lord, and all nations upon whom my name is invoked, says the Lord, who, do, who does these things. To the Lord was his own work known from the beginning of the world, for which cause judge that they who from among the Gentiles are converted to God are not to be disquieted, but that we write to them that they refrain themselves from the pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time has in every city those that preach him in the synagogues, where he is read every Sabbath. Then it pleased the apostles and ancients with the whole church to choose men of their own company and to send to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who is surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Writing by their hands... The apostles and ancients, brethren, to the brethren of the Gentiles that are at Antioch and in Syria and Cilicia, greeting. Forasmuch as we have heard that some going out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, to whom we gave no commandment, it has seemed good to us, being assembled together, to choose out men and to send them to you with our well-beloved Barnabas and Paul men that have given their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent, therefore, Judas and Silas, who themselves also will, by word of mouth, tell you the same things. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no further burden upon you than these necessary things, that you abstain from things sacrificed to idols and from blood and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which things, keeping yourselves, you shall do well. Farewell. They, therefore, being dismissed, went down to Antioch, and gathering together the multitude, delivered the epistle. And when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. But Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, with many words comforted the brethren and confirmed them. And after they had spent some time there, they were let go with peace by the brethren to them that had sent them. But it seemed good to Silas to remain there, and Judas alone departed to Jerusalem. And Paul and Barnabas continued at Antioch, teaching and preaching with many others the word of the Lord. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's return and visit our brethren in all the cities in which we have preached the word of the Lord to see how they do. And Barnabas would have taken with them John also, that was surnamed Mark. But Paul desired that he might not be received, having departed from them out of Pamphylia, not gone with them to do the work. And there arose a dissension, dissension so that they departed one from another. And Barnabas, indeed, taking Mark, sailed to Cyprus. But Paul, choosing Silas, departed, being delivered by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches, commanding them to keep the precepts of the apostles and the ancients. And he came to Derbe and Lystra, 
And behold, there was a certain disciple there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman that believed, but his father was a Gentile. To this man, the brethren that were in Lystra and Iconium gave a good testimony. Him, Paul would have to go along with him, and taking him, he circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Gentile. And as they passed through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep that were decreed by the apostles and ancients who were at Jerusalem. And the churches were confirmed in faith and increased in numbers daily. And when they had passed through Phrygia and the country of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. And when they were come into Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not suffer them. And when they had passed through Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision was showed to Paul in the night, which was a man of Macedonia, standing and beseeching him and saying, Pass over into Macedonia and help us. And as soon as he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, being assured that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. This was possibly early A.D. 50. And sailing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothrace, and the day following to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the chief city of part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were in this city some days conferring together, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by a riverside where it seemed that there was prayer. And sitting down, we spoke to the women that were assembled. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, one that worshipped God, heard, whose heart the Lord opened to attend to those things which were said by Paul, and when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain girl having a pythonical spirit met us, who brought to her masters much gain by divining. This same, following Paul and us, cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who preach to you the way of salvation. And she did this many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to go from her. And he went out the same hour. But her master, seeing that the hope of their gain was gone, apprehending Paul and Silas, brought them into the marketplace to the rulers, and presenting them to the magistrates, they said, These men disturb our city, being Jews, and preach a fashion which it is not lawful for us to receive nor observe, being Romans. And the people ran together against them, and the magistrates, rending off their clothes, commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them diligently, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, praying, praised God. And they that were in the prison heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and the bands of all were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, wakening out of his sleep, and seeing the doors of the prison open, 
drawing his sword, would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then, calling for a light, he went in, and trembling fell down at the feet of Paul and Silas. And bringing them out, he said, Masters, what must I do that I may be saved? But they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you shall be saved, and your house. And they preached the word of the Lord to him, and to all that were in his house. And he, taking them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, and himself was baptized in all his house immediately. And when he had brought them into his own house, he laid the table for them, and rejoiced with all his house, believing God. And when the day was come, the magistrates sent to the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told these words to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly, uncondemned, men that are Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privately? Not so, but let them come, and let us out themselves. And the sergeants told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid, hearing that they were Romans. And coming, they besought them, and bringing them out, they desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia, and having seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. And when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, according to his custom, went into them. And for three Sabbath days he reasoned with them out of the scriptures, declaring and insinuating that the Christ was to suffer and to rise again from the dead, and that this is Jesus Christ, whom I preach to you. And some of them believed and were associated to Paul and Silas. And of those that served God, and of the Gentiles, a great multitude, and of noble women, not a few. But the Jews moved with envy in taking to them some wicked men of the vulgar sort, and making a tumult, set the city in an uproar. And besetting Jason's house, sought to bring them out to the people, and not finding them, they drew Jason and certain brethren to the rulers of the city, crying, They that set the city in an uproar are come here also, whom Jason has received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And they stirred up the people, and the rulers of the city, hearing these things, and having taken satisfaction of Jason and of the rest, they let them go. But the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night to Berea, who, when they were come there, went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, who received the word with all eagerness, daily searching the scriptures, whether these things were so. And many indeed of them believed, and of honorable women that were Gentiles, and of men not a few. And when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was also preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also, stirring up and troubling the multitude, and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go to the sea, but Silas and Timothy remained there. And they that conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and receiving a commandment from him to Silas and Timothy that they should come to him with all speed, they departed. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, 
His spirit was stirred within him, seeing the city wholly given to idolatry. He disputed, therefore, in the synagogue with the Jews and with them that served God, and in the marketplace every day with them that were there. And certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics disputed with him, and some said, what is it that this word sower would say? But others, he seems to be a setter forth of new gods, because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And taking him, they brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is which you speak of? For you bring in certain new things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Now, all the Athenians and strangers that were there employed themselves in nothing else but either in telling or hearing some new thing. But Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For passing by and seeing your idols, I found an altar also, on which was written, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship without knowing it, that I preach to you. God, who made the world and all things therein, he being Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Neither is he served with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing it is he who gives to all life and breath and all things and has made of one all mankind to dwell upon the whole face of the earth, determining appointed times and the limits of their habitation, that they should seek God, if haply they may feel after him or find him, although he be not far off from every one of us. For in him we live and move and are, as some also of your own poets said, for we are also his offspring. Being therefore the offspring of God, we must not suppose the divinity, the divinity to be like to gold or silver or stone, the graving of art and device of man. And God indeed, having winked at the times of this ignorance, now declares to men that all should everywhere do penance, because he has appointed a day wherein he will judge the world in equity by the man whom he has appointed, giving faith to all by raising him from the dead. But when they had heard of the resurrection of the dead, some indeed mocked, but others said, We will hear you again concerning this matter. So Paul went out from them, but certain men adhering to him did believe among whom was also Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After these things, departing from Athens, he came to Corinth, and finding a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with Priscilla his wife, because Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, he came to them. And because he was of the same trade, he remained with them and worked. Now they were tent makers by trade. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, bringing in the name of the Lord Jesus, and he persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was earnest in preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But they, gainsaying and blaspheming, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go to the Gentiles. And departing from there, he entered into the house of a certain man, man named Titus Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house was adjoining to the synagogue. 
And Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul in the night by a vision, Do not fear, but speak, and do not hold your peace, because I am with you, and no man shall set upon you to hurt you. For I have much people in this city. And he stayed there a year and six months, teaching among them the word of God. Next time we will hear his letters to the Thessalonians, which he wrote while in Corinth.